And and Asmo, wake up Asmo, Chalcedonian, Chloe, and free enslaved. And um, Miss Grams, yeah, once again, thanks for that for that blog post. I'll check it out tomorrow morning. And we got Don C and Java Doctor and JJ's and Juana and Rain and uh, Rob Works and Rome's and Phantom and Anti, Colfax, Dakota, Grump, Gruberzilla, Grumpazilla. Frumpy and Cooper's <laughs> came out to a combination of Grumpazilla. Uh, anyway, Grump, Frumpy, and Cooperzilla. <laughs> Don uh, and Kozu and Moe. Peace Guy. I hate Peace Guy. Um, uh, box, boxes, boxes all over the t place there. The Pwn Sauce, the Sock Puppet, and even the Skittle Bot. And maybe others. Yep. I don't know. Maybe others that I, I, I just don't see. But uh, <laughs> how do you see you all? So, um, what a week, eh? Oh, uh, yeah, what a week. Yeah, you... Uh, Interesting you, week. You, you did a 2-1-2. Two, two, two. Yes. That's, that's nice. That's get, nice having a Wednesday off, ain't it? Uh, yeah, kind of. But, you know, it's, it's weird. It's just... It's just weird. It was weird going to back to work on Thursday. It felt like a Monday, kind of. Yeah, well, it breaks up the... Well, well that's fine if, if it's a two-day week. <laughs> right. It went fast. I mean, yeah, it wasn't bad, so... Yeah, no, that's good. I mean, at least I got paid for the holiday, so... Yeah. Yep. That, that's great, so... So, yeah, um... Yay, raw! Fourth of July... Uh, well, you know, well, whatever. Well, what did you do? Anything interesting? No. Yeah, good. <laughs> I li well, the night before, I listened to the Grateful Dead. So that was awesome. That that is awesome. Yeah. Well, the, not really. Not again. Re not really the Grateful Dead. No, Dead and Company. Yeah. So yes, and they're amazing. Yeah, no, that's so. Great. So, it's been very enjoyable. Are, are they streaming all the shows they do? Yeah, on Mixler. Mixler, but that, that's... M-I-X-L-R. It's yeah. not them streaming the shows. It's people there that are streaming the shows. Yeah, it's just audio. Yeah, yeah. but you can get the uh, video version if you want through Dead End Company website, and you pay 30 bucks. It's like, oh. I'm sorry, not paying that. Yeah, I've seen what you look like. <laughs> yep, I'm not paying it. I'm good with just hearing it. Yeah. Um, definitely. Yeah. Good with that. Yeah, I've 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 used Mixler as a broadcast thing before. Yeah, they're out in Cali right now. Chula Vista. Yeah, they'll be tonight. here soon. Chula Vista. Oh man. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, anyway, so uh, they'll they'll be here pretty soon, coming up. In Albuquerque. Yep. Yeah, New Mexico. So. Right. I'll be listening to that. <laughs> Live from Isleta. Yeah. Have you ever been there? <laughs> no, I've never been there. I've driven past there. Oh, okay. Which is close enough for me. <laughs> right. <laughs> oh, uh, man. The mosquitoes. Okay, so Zach had a baseball game Tuesday night. And, you know, it rained pretty much all weekend off and on, and it rained Monday. A little bit. And so, and it rained Tuesday in the morning a little bit. Yeah. So anyway, I'm sitting at the baseball game Tuesday night. As soon as the sun goes down, I start getting eaten alive by mosquitoes. Right. So I go to the car and get my buck spray and put it on my feet, you know, because I'm wearing sandals. And put it on my ankles and I put a long sleeve shirt on. But they're voracious, man. They're freaking brutal this year. I'm just saying. None here. We don't have any. I heard of... Uh, what? So we we don't have any. You don't have them there? Not not here. Maybe in Albuquerque. Never? Uh, I, I have never not, have not, mosquitoes I've never, there? I've never seen a mosquito since I moved here. Oh, my God. You suck. <laughs> well, <laughs> that may be true, but they don't suck me because they aren't here. <laughs> <laughs> no, they don't. No, but... Yeah, That's no, we, all it was we, in... Colorado too. They don't have ticks and stuff out there. So oh, we get. I mean, they have ticks. They they got ticks. Colorado. Yeah. Oh yeah. It's okay. Rocky, Rocky, Rocky Mountain ticks, man. It's it's a. Big, oh yeah. Yeah. You're right. So why did I think? I don't know why I thought that because I don't know. I've been out in Colorado, so 
you know. Yeah, no, there's, all... there's there's ticks here too, but I mean, you know, if, if you go hang out in the brush, right? But, you know. But good. the mosquitoes, man! Oh my God, they're brutal. They're just brutal. If you're not, if you don't have bug spray on, they're just really bad this year. Yeah, well, we had plenty of them down in San Diego, but it's because of the rain. It's because of all the rain we've had. Yeah. So, and, and if you heard, yeah. if you heard, you heard those little, weird little beeps just a few minutes ago, there, I was, no. I, I was, I was te- checking my uh, my ten day forecast for my desktop widget. Oh, and it, oh, okay. And it, it beeps when you open it and close it. Anyway, um, the the monsoon season just started, so oh, okay. we'll be getting plenty of rain coming up. But, yeah, but I'm still, sure. but still, we won't get mosquitoes. See, so that it's not they just don't thrive where you live. Yeah, you know, I don't know if it's elevation or wind or... Whatever know. the reason, you're lucky. Whatever, well, yeah, whatever it is. Yeah. Maybe, <laughs> and maybe it, you know, the rainy season is only like a month and a half, and 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 the rest of the time it's really dry, so... But you guys got scorpions down there, rattlesnakes. You got those too. Don't you have those? Not scorpions. We don't really? have scorpions. No scorpions there? Oh hell no! They wouldn't survive around here. You got, you got, you got. What do you got? Black eye, black, black, black widow spiders and brown recluses. Uh, I don't even think those. I mean, yeah, they can be here, but I don't think they're <laughs> common. Okay. We have brown recluse spiders. Well, everyone has well, I think. Yeah, and, and uh, yeah, okay. Those are bad. So you, so you got your deadly critters. Oh yeah, it's not like we're like. You know, have none of them. <laughs> yes, <it's okay. laughs> we have bear. You know, bear. deer can be deadly. Who deer? Deer can be deadly if you hit yeah. one on the road or something. It can kill you. Yeah. You know. Sure. No, deer can be deadly. A, Every year, uh, I mean, okay. Uh, see, I am a car person, right? I am a car person. I, I like motorcycles. I've had fun on motorcycles a few times in my life. Yeah. So I would never diss motorcycles, but compared to, I mean. Like, yeah, compared to a car, they're very dangerous. I mean, cars are dangerous, don't get me wrong. But a motorcycle is just super fucking dangerous. And I don't understand these people that live in Wisconsin and ride their motorcycles at night, like on the back roads, on the country roads. Yeah. Because it's like a death wish. I mean, every year you hear about it. Just last week, some guy died from hitting a deer. He was riding a motorcycle. You know, it's like... You know, the it's thing, like, r- riding a motorcycle on the highways, the thing to worry about is not your wildlife, it's it's people in cars. Right. No, <laughs> I get that too, they, but... It's people, just, people in cars are much more likely to kill you than, probably. than, than some piece of wildlife. <laughs> right. Because, there, I mean, well, it depends on where you're driving. I'm talking about backcountry roads. I, I understand, but there's cars and... You know, Car- yeah, there is. There's people that drive impaired all the time and, and drive like crap. Yeah. Really. Not even imp- they're not impaired. They're just shitty drivers. Right. I mean, it, it, it's bad. There's some really shitty drivers out there. It's just amazing. But anyway, um, I just, I, I, I would not, I would not feel safe on a motorcycle. Like you say, it's the other drivers you have to worry about in cars and, you know, a, in Wisconsin, a deer stepping out or something, you know. Sure. Well, you it's got like, those. You know, we we got we got those here. Uh, here it could be a cow or a, a buffalo or. A <laughs> right. Yeah, it could be a cow here. Oh yeah, big time. Easily, it could be a cow here. <laughs> this, this is this is open range territory. Oh which, yeah, which, that's which, even yeah, more like uh, than, you know ranchers don't have to fence in their cattle. Right. Yeah. Well, I don't. I don't do that. Yeah, free free range. So, um, <laughs> yeah. You gotta but, be but watch, yeah, I used, to, I, used to, I, used to, I used to cruise all the mountain roads up in, when I was in San Diego. And uh-huh. uh, there's plenty of, you know, deer and other wild critters that cross the road up there. But, yeah, oh yeah, everywhere. But, I mean. you know, it ain't nothing like it. it. Ain't nothing like being out there and cruising, cruising around those bends and up and down the mountains and... Yeah, no, that's great stuff. Yeah. So, I mean... I, yeah. Yeah, you take a little risk to have, you know, to have right. a good time. 
<laughs> it's all right. Yeah, I guess so. I mean, I guess there's people are more courageous than me. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. Well, you know, some people think that you know ATV and is 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 dangerous. See, now that to me would be fun. It, it is a great time, and the only time yeah, I, I mean, the only that time, would be fun. the only time I ever crashed on, on my uh, my quad racer, so I had a Suzuki quad racer 250. Yeah. Okay. The only time I crashed is when some idiot on a motorcycle slammed into the side of me. Oh, great. Oh, wonderful. <laughs> and I, what the and hell? So it, it wasn't really a crash. I mean, it was. He, he ran into me, and I and I tumbled. The whole bike tumbled everything because he was doing probably 60 down this oh my God. path. And, and um, he was supposed to be behind me, following me to this place. And I turned, and, and he didn't. And... <laughs> Great. And yeah. <laughs> it, it could have been something. There could have been a, a motive there. He he was my girlfriend's ex. Ah, <laughs> yeah. I, I hate indeed. to think that of the guy, but you know, right. you, you, you always figure your girlfriend's ex is a dirtbag. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> True. Uh, True. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Let's kick it off with some tunes here. Okay. Let's do that. Oh, boy. Spark them up if you got them, folks. Yeah, do that, everyone. Come Absolutely, on now. Absolutely, because, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's the kind of it's it's show we got here. This is Alpha Blondie. <laughs> Oh, yeah, little Gary Clark there for you. Thanks to Kate. That was Travis County. Yeah, Travis County, that's down there at Austin. I wonder if he was thinking about Art Acevedo there. Travis County, he's putting him in jail. Poor man, Gary Clark Jr. Before that, for the Moose Girl, Huey Lewis and the News with I Want a New Drug. And we kicked it off with Alpha Blondie covering Pink Floyd's Wish You Were Here. Yeah, I'm glad you're all here, too. <laughs> oh, yeah. Good to have y'all here with us on the Freakers Ball. Yes, indeed. We survived another week. Yes, we did. Imagine okay. that. Yep. Yep, yep. <laughs> so, anyway, apparently, Chomsky is going over to the UK for a visit. Yeah. They, all presidents go there. For a visit, sure. Know. We know why, but we know why. Um. Anyway, so these people, this group of people, anti-Trump protesters, they're called. They're calling them. They they have this huge balloon, and you might want to put it on the screen. It's it's like a baby. It's like one of those Macy's Thanksgiving Day balloon, you know. Yes. But it's Trump as a baby, like in a diaper and stuff. <laughs> yes. So, Nigel Farage, who usually is an outspoken person over there in Parliament, I believe he is. Right. He's uh, over there. He doesn't say PMs, which I, I'm not sure what PM stands for, what but he's one of them. Prime Minister? No. No, no. Uh, MP. Maybe it's MP. I, I don't know. But whatever. It's, it's Member the, of Parliament. That, that okay. So then. He's saying that it's the biggest insult to a sitting U.S. president ever. Nigel Farage is saying this. Right. But. Which. <laughs> I don't know. I think it's pretty funny. I mean, I don't give a shit. No, no, no. no, no. Let, let, it, let him fly. It, it, it's me. hilarious. But that doesn't it mean. Is. But that does not mean that it's not the biggest insult to a sitting president ever. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, uh, <laughs> let's see if they got a good shot without it being blocked by their crap here. Oh, my God. Uh, but it's I, just, I, I guess we'll use this one. Uh, all right. <laughs> it's funny. I mean, it's... it's yeah, no, it is I'm funny. I mean, you know what I mean? It's funny in a way. You know what I mean? I mean, it's not, like, the most hilarious thing ever, but... 
No, no, but but it, but it's funny enough. Yeah, I mean, it just caught my attention. The stupid balloon. <laughs> The, the the malt is the funniest part of all. I yeah, yeah they, I, I've I've seen it. I, I've seen it referred to in very angry, the angry baby Trump. That's right. Oh my God. Oh, anyway, he, this is things going to be flying around while he's in town. Right. Yay! It's not going to do anything. It's not oh, going to oh. make anything change. Free, free, free and slave ass. Where's the Muhammad pedophile balloon? Well, you know the guy that that's running London right now. He he's a, a what do you call him, a Muslim. Yeah, and they have counter protesters wanting to make a balloon of him too. Right. It says in that article, if you scroll down, counter protesters are ra fundraising for Sadiq Khan baby balloon. Yeah. So but, anyway, that's. You know that that seems fair. <laughs> yeah. Oh, boy. God. You can't make this stuff up. This is... I mean, these balloons aren't cheap, you know, so they spent a lot of money. <laughs> right. I don't know. Whatever. <laughs> I don't know either. It's like, it, I just thought it was silly. Oh, I mean, well, it's well kind of, of course. It's of fun. course and it is, but, you know, it's uh, it's still funny. Um, yeah. <laughs> and... and, and <laughs> Yeah, well, what what does he really expect? He's going to get that wherever he goes around the world, so. Pretty much. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he, he, he is oh, yeah. the target of much abuse, and I, I cannot say it's not deserved because of his arrogance. Uh, regardless of his yeah. actions. Regardless of his actions, he's, a, he's an arrogant bastard, and, uh, you know, yeah. I, I don't know. God, this is not real. I, you know, I don't think he's really got a whole lot to do with what what he, his actions are, but but his attitude is his own, and um, yeah, for sure. Uh, wow. Yeah. Wow. I don't know what else is going on. I'm just... It was a weird week. But, uh, so I haven't really been paying attention to the news too much, I guess. Oh, okay. Well, I got stories, so... Okay, good. <laughs> <laughs> oh, let me see what I got lined up here. Okay. Uh, so many things. Oh, this weekend. This is the, uh... This is the weekend of the, the, the Roswell UFO Festival. Oh, cool. Yeah, it's, it's always, you know, the early June, the first weekend of June. Um, I mean, July, excuse me. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, right. I, I, you know, probably nobody here is going to get on down there to the Roswell UFO Festival. But, you know, if you have your opportunity to uh, get out there, I, I never go. I, I've, I've been to Roswell. Um, what? I've been to Roswell quite a few times. But but ne ne never am I going to go during the UFO festival, because that's when all the freaking yahoos go. I suppose. You know, it's like the people that go drinking on New Year's Eve. Uh, <laughs> right. <laughs> it's just stupid to do that. All the stuff is there all year round, and, oh, and okay. on this one weekend, yeah. you know, not only like the uh, hotels are like quadruple price. Right, uh, but everything else is too, and then you got to deal with all the crowds. And Roswell's not really set up for the the size of crowds that wind up going there. But um, this is the seventy first year, seventy one years since uh, wow. since the, the crash there. Wow. And and I don't know if you know or not, but a lot of the stuff about Roswell, about the crash. Yeah. Is still classified. Right. Okay. And so if you want to believe the, the the official story on Roswell, that it was a weather balloon <laughs> that crashed. Right. Then why is it classified after 71 years? Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> There's no freaking weather balloon. 
<laughs> and it was certainly it wasn't even like you know a secret plane or any any of the other uh, defense stuff they may have had at that point. Because if it were, all that stuff is old hat down. It's all it's all gone. It, it, none of it matters anymore. It, it, you know th those 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 things are already mothballed at this point in time. Right. Oh, big time. Yeah. Yeah. So. um... Anyway, let me share a couple other UFO things here with you. They don't want us to know, Graham. They don't want us to know. No, they don't want you to know. They don't want you to know. But you, you know how uh, uh, Real Liberty Media, we have the uh, Real Liberty Media Daily uh, yeah. news, newspaper yep. that, that that is put out? Well, there's also one by these other people I follow on the uh, Twitter, which, which is called the, the UFO Network Daily Report. And, okay. Um, it's just something that you might want to check out. they got a lot of good stories on there. Um, mm -hmm. Daily. Well, and information out. has been leaked from Roswell. Oh, well, certainly information. Alien, yeah. yeah. Aliens are, are uh, yeah, checking out the weather here on Earth. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> uh, so just check it out. They got stuff here today, uh, like engine for U.S. military new space plane fires up a ten day te in ten day test. Um, oh. Alpha okay. Lion Day 2018. The Earth is furthest from sun today. Uh, right. Epic crash with sausage galleries shaped Milky Way's <laughs> bulge. Uh, the Big Dipper sparkles over dramatic landscape. Just, you know, like space and UFO stories. Oh, they, cool. they, they post all kinds of stuff there. Um, mm -hmm. One thing that I found posted on there that I'm going to share with you, which I, 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 I don't know who these people think the regular people are, but um, <laughs> they got this one quite wrong. Um, because they, the title of the article on Area51.org yeah. <laughs> is yeah. three, th The Three Great UF Movies You Haven't Heard Of. Okay. Okay, well, the first one, I, I'm not sure if I've ever seen this or not, but it's called Roswell, the UFO cover-up. Um, okay. I'm, not, I'm not positive I saw that. It stars Kyle McLaughlin and Martin Sheen. Um I don't think I saw it. It's possible I've seen it. Anyway, the second one is Communion. And you know that movie, right? Uh, yes, I do. Yeah, Communion. It stars uh, Walken, Christopher Walken. Play, yep. play, play, it's the, the real Whitney, Whitley Strieber story. Yeah. Yeah. I think most people have heard of that. And the third one they list is Fire in the Sky. Everybody knows that movie. <laughs> Yeah, everybody knows. Why. So I don't know how these are three of. Maybe it's maybe because maybe we're old. <laughs> yeah, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> maybe it's because these are fairly old movies, um, and and maybe we're old, and and so if but if you've never heard of at least those last two. Um, You've been you've been sleeping and living in a cave or something. I don't I don't know. I, those are those are two. I actually have both of those on DVD. Um, <laughs> so. I remember when Fire in the Sky came out. Yeah, yeah, no, it's a great it's film. It's a pretty good movie. Yeah, it's a good movie. Yeah. And Communion is a great movie too. Um, oh yeah, uh, it's been so long since I saw that. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, Christopher Walken plays a great role in that. He, he does, you know, he plays the part of Whitley Strieber. Yeah, um, I like him. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and, and you know, you'll hear Whitley on the Coast to Coast AM from time to time, and you'll actually hear that guy Travis Walton, the Fire in the Sky oh, okay. guy from. Uh, on, oh, okay. On oh, Coast, yeah, yeah. I've Coast, heard him on there. Yeah, he's on Coast to Coast at, sometimes too. Yeah, a long um, time ago, I heard him on there. I don't really listen to it now, so. Yeah, Communion's a cool movie, man. Anyway, yeah. um, <laughs> you can see some of the nasty things, uh, in, in a way, uh, in some of the nasty things that they did to, to Whitley during his abductions. Um, and he's very open about it. You know, he tells the whole thing. Yeah. And uh, he goes to, like, these uh, this one uh, UFO abductee group. You know, people talk about their things there. They're right. horrible. They're horrible. <laughs> there are horrible people that go to those things. Most of them aren't, <laughs> most of them aren't even really abductees, you know. <laughs> right. Uh, I mean, how do you know? How can you prove it? 
I, I don't know, but you could tell the people that, at least the way it was portrayed in the movie, mm -hmm. which I believe was probably fairly accurate. Um, yeah, no, they're not. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, well, earlier this week, I, I think it Monday might have been, uh, National UFO Day or something like that. Uh, okay. Which, okay. <laughs> um, I had another story, UFO story from, I think I marked last week. Okay. Let, me see, let me see if it's still in here. Let me unmark this one first. I forget to unmark a lot of these stories, and then I wind up with them, like, for weeks later. Right. I don't know if I have it. Anyway, there was a thing say, showing, I don't think I have the story still. Uh, showing that the number of UFO sightings has dropped off dramatically over the last ten years. Um, hmm. Yeah, I don't think I don't see it here in my list. So maybe that's because they're here already. Well, they they've been here all along. Here. Yeah. Well, I mean, you know what I mean. They're walking among us, like. Right. Right. Well, that's just a theory. I mean, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Well, they. It wouldn't surprise me. I mean. Yeah, no, since they, you know, they populated the planet, so. <laughs> so, yeah, anyway. All right, I don't see it in my list here. I mean, we're aliens to them, right? Well, if we went to their planet, we'd I be... They, I wonder how they refer to us. If we, were, if we went to their planet, we'd be aliens. Right. Right, I mean, alien. That just means right. you're you're not native of whatever whatever place right. you're in. Um, so yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh God. Abductees in the chat room, even. Oh sure, why not? <laughs> I'm thinking some of these people are actually aliens too. <laughs> 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 Never know. Oh God. <laughs> oh, what's Travis? Are you talking about Travis Walton there, Grammy? There's still some. There is. There's like several different species that have been identified of aliens, and one of the ones that they were most afraid of was the uh, ones that can look human. Oh, sure, yeah, absolutely. That's, that's the ones they're most afraid of, because they, they, you don't know. Right. You know, they look human. Or they just come in and they take over somebody's body, you know. Right, or something like that, you know. Yeah, I don't think... Uh, Maybe well, I have those saved, those, that story of that guy. God, Let me see. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I heard uh, Travis Walton say the movie wasn't... Uh, Fire in the Sky was not real accurate, but... Uh, I've heard, heard Whitley talking about communion. It's his book. It's his movie, and uh, I think that that was pretty close to yeah. Thing, except for maybe the way they depicted the aliens. <laughs> 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 yeah, that was a little that was a little bit corny, but uh, yeah. Oh, right here. Okay. Okay. You guys got to watch, or you don't got to. These are very interesting. And I believe I got these from actually from Gooberzilla. I'm going to just make sure this is the right thing here. Right. Yes, this is it. Okay. Robert Dean. Have you ever heard of that guy? I don't think so, no. Oh, he's an uh, ex. Um, he had top. He had. Um, what do they call it? The highest level of clearance you can have. Uber, Uber secret. Something like that. <laughs> I don't know. And anyway, if you, it's you know it's an hour and thirty minutes, but it's really really interesting. All right, I'll, I'll put then, it I'll put it into the blog post. Okay, and then there's another one. Two. Where did it go? Right here. They took a lot of liberty. This guy was very, he's very uh, interesting. He saw a lot of shit, and he talks about it now. Yeah. So, um, if you have time sometime on a rainy day, 
Very interesting. Same guy. Yep, the same guy. Alright. So, um, I think he's been on Coast to Coast, too. So, Robert O. Dean with E.T. Contact and NATO's Cosmic Top Secret UFO slash Cosmic, alien. Cosmic, that's what they call it. Cosmic Clearance. When you have a top level. Oh. Yeah. I thought that was interesting. <laughs> Yeah, that's what Whitley yeah. said, Grammy, that uh, communion was pre was pretty close, but Travis Walton said, nah, they, they made a lot of that crap up. But yeah, well, that's fine. He, Travis has had plenty of years now to talk about what's happened there, and uh, there's been a lot of good interviews with him that you could hear. And um, Hell, I feel bad for those guys, man. Uh, none of those, those abductees don't come back with happy stories about what happened no. to him. No. <laughs> it was, it was, uh, it was not, uh, pleasant. Th those are not fun times. Because they, they just, they, they, they grab you and do things to you and, and, and you got really no say. You, you don't have any control over yourself. They've, they've got control of you. Right. And, um, and, uh, apparently they come back again and again. At least, at least really? for some some of the abductees, um, they certainly have with Whitley. Really? Oh yeah, they they grab them on a regular basis. <laughs> huh? Oh, lovely. <laughs> yeah. That's gonna suck. <laughs> yes, indeed. <laughs> Maybe today is the day they're gonna come back for me. Aliens. Yeah, every ET, day. Like extraterrestrials. <laughs> Wow. Yeah. Uh, I tell ya. Who knows? But that's 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 the way this that's the way the story goes, anyhow. Wow. Yep. Interesting. Bad cheese. <laughs> <laughs> Bad cheese. Oh God. <laughs> okay. So anyway, um, earlier this week, I think since this where was. This might have been posted on Minds.com. I forget where. But uh, you know the song by Afro Man, Because I Got High? Yeah. And how it's loaded with all the bad shit that he, that he did because he was high. Yeah. Right? Yep. Well, this is a new version of that song. Oh, really? Okay. That he did. Well, there's gonna be a break of right. Clicked the wrong thing there. <laughs> Obvious, oh, obviously, yeah. since the Freakers Ball song started, I clicked the wrong thing there. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, this is Afro Man, Because I Got High, Positive Remix. Awesome. I think you're going to enjoy it. Okay, let's say lighter, please, for free. Thank you. Yeah, free at the Isle of Wight there. Doing all right now. Uh, before that, for Mr. Sock Puppet, Angry, uh, some people say his middle initial is J, Angry J Malmstein, but I'm pretty sure it's F. I, I think his proper name, pronounced properly, is Angry Fucking Malmstein. Anyway, um, <laughs> that was Red House there, and we kicked it off with Afro Man with the remix, positive remix version of Because I Got High. <laughs> oh, good night, Grammy. Thank you for your show. Thank you for your blog post. Thank you for good night, Grammy. all you do, Miss Grammy. Good night, young yeah. lady. That's right. So. <laughs> okay. So this is this is unbelievable to me that people do this, but they do. Uh, okay. Were you gonna talk about something, Grim? No, go go for it. Oh, okay. Anyway, this is on W E A U. It's from Shano County, Wisconsin, which is north of Milwaukee. Okay. Northwest of Milwaukee. Kind of in the boonies, but not really. Uh, anyway. Uh, these cops told these two people... Uh, okay. Um, Shano County, Wisconsin. A Milwaukee man and a Serene woman, woman have been charged. Serene is the town. 
Okay. Have been charged with multiple counts after more than 80 grams of drugs were found inside the woman's body. What 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 kind Geral of drugs? What kind, what, what kind Geral of drugs? Geral, just the way Gerald McCollum, 39, and Desiree Webster, 20, were arrested June 25th in Shano. A Shano police officer acting on a tip stopped Webster and McCollum on Highway County Highway B. Both subjects were taken into custody. Webster had been driving the car. And a police dog showed particular interest in the driver's seat. A criminal complaint states a strip search was performed on Webster. A corrections officer told police she believed Webster had something hidden in her vaginal cavity. <laughs> Webster was taken to a Shano hospital for a TC scan of her pelvic area. The scan showed something resembling a plastic bag, described as being the size of a fist. A nurse removed the baggie. Investigators discovered that the baggie contained three smaller bags. Here's what detectives say was inside the bag. 36.67 grams of cocaine, 14.2.72 grams of meth, 27.8 grams of synthetic weed, 6 MDA pills, 1.26 grams of marijuana. In total, she had 81.97 grams of drugs in her body. So there you go. You know how easily she could die from that? Like apparently she didn't came to kill her. Apparently like, she, she, she either like, she either didn't care or uh, just wow. wasn't wasn't thinking right. I... Wow. <laughs> so there you go. Oh God. <laughs> yeah, you know. Um... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Link for that one. Oh, I thought I posted it. If you did, I missed it. Yeah, um, Brainiac here. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so she's she's going away for a while. Yeah, for sure. Well, she looks like a smart girl. <laughs> Looking at her picture now. <laughs> <laughs> really, Graham? <laughs> <laughs> she, she looks like a genius. <laughs> So that, ha I mean, that just something that I noticed this week. It's like, oh, you know, this is just awesome. So, this is just great. <laughs> uh, wow. Uh, well, apparently, in order to make something either cause and or not cause cancer, all that all that is required for that to happen is for government to say so. That, that's yeah. that, that's all it comes down to is if government says it causes cancer, then it does. And if they say it doesn't, then it doesn't. Following me? Yes. <laughs> yes, I am. California moves to declare coffee safe from cancer risk. Which, of course, coffee was never a cancer risk. No. But they declared it to be a cancer that's risk. Oh my gosh! <laughs> and now they're saying, well, but, 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 that, that, "That's not working out real well. Let's change our mind on that one." Right. So yeah. uh, this is from June fifteenth, but uh, whatever, a couple weeks ago, California officials bucked a recent court ruling Friday that and offered reassurance to concerned coffee drinkers that their fix will not give them cancer. The unprecedented action by the Office of Environmental Health Hazard Assessment to propose the regulation to essentially clear coffee of the stigma that it could pose a toxic risk, followed by a review of more than 1,000 studies published this week by the World Health Organization that found inadequate evidence that coffee causes cancer, which there's been many studies proving exactly the opposite, that it's uh, uh, against cancer. It'll, it'll prevent cancer. Anyway, the state agency implemented Implemented implements a law doesn't even make any sense. Passed by voters in 1986 that requires uh, warnings of chemicals known to cause cancer and birth defects. One of those chemicals is acrylamide, which is found in many things and is a byproduct of coffee roasting and uh, and brewing, present in every cup of coffee. If the regulation is adopted, it would be a huge win for the coffee industry. 
uh, which faces potentially massive civil penalties after, re after re recently losing an eight-year-old lawsuit in L.A. Superior Court that re would require scary warnings on all coffee packaging oh, sold in California. Yeah, I'll let you read it, but it, it's just ridiculous. Um, yeah. That, that so that that's 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 the determining factor now. Not that something actually does or doesn't cause cancer. Just that government says it does or doesn't. <laughs> that's, uh, that's what it comes down to. There you go, from courthousenews.com. <laughs> all right. Oh, man. <laughs> wow. Wow. Uh, okay. Um, I want to do. I don't want to do that one yet. Oh, here we go. Well, uh, I was gonna. Uh, I don't need. I could save. I could do this one now, since we're talking about food and such, drink, whatever. Yeah. Save, no, I'll save it a different. Not not for the weed portion of the show. <laughs> okay. Because you might find this a, a handy uh, hint for your 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 cooking needs. All right. I think I, I, some of you might. I don't know how okay. to make how to make chill cannabis chili. Oh, <laughs> an incredibly easy slow cooker cannabis chili that will liven up any party. So, in a in a world increasingly crowded with new cannabis chefs and cookbooks, it's good to have time tested experts like Sherry Sickard whoever, whose advice you can rely on, known as Cannabis Sherry, to her friends and fans online. Sicard is a committed activist who founded the Marijuana Lifer Project, which connects non-violent prisoners of the war on drugs with resources, pen pals, and clemency campaigns. As an author, Sicard teaches people how to make their own THC-infused foods. With several books oh. to her credit, including the new, newly released Easy Cannabis Cookbook, which details simple recipes for a variety of sweet and savory dishes. So, um, Awesome! Yeah, this beef and bean chili is the perfect way for warming up chili weather, and using cannabis-infused olive oil makes the recipe much more chill. <laughs> I'm sure. Mix up the ingredients <laughs> in about 20 minutes and uh, let your slow cooker do the work while you're out during the day uh, returning to a delicious medicated dinner. Or make this the day before friends come over for Sunday football. Oh, right. Wow. Why would they do that? That's a terrible thing to do. <laughs> anyway, well, when, when dosed with a tablespoon of Saccard's cannabis oil, this chili contains 80 milligrams of THC. But be advised that your results will vary based yes. upon the potent potency of your weed. Uh, anyway, the, it gives the whole recipe there in that. <laughs> yes, crock pot, yes. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so there you go. All the ingredients are there. There's nothing too um, uh, outrageous in there. Just uh, leave the onion out, and you'll be good to go. Right. You can't have onion. And you don't want them because they're just nasty. <laughs> well, that's because you're allergic to them. Well, I'm just telling you, you don't want them. You know, whatever. I don't eat them very often. Anyway, you okay. got the full ingredients. I don't mind them, the, but I don't eat them often. You got the full ingredients and and the uh, uh, and the directions there in that. Although uh, I had onion rings tonight. There you go. Okay. So, so you know, so they were good. So you, you're I'm good. I'm allergic to them, so I'm I'm lucky. <laughs> playa, playa. That's P L A Y A. Y A. Playa. Playa. <laughs> Like a playa. <laughs> I sound so bad. <laughs> Doesn't even sound good. Right? I sound like a total nerd when I try to say it. The boys just would agree with me on that one. Mom, well, don't try to talk hip. I'm like, uh, well, I got, screw I got, that. I am hip. I, I actually have so many pot stories. I, I need to share another one. Okay. Because I can't do them all in Always one. Always good. Always a good topic. Can't, can't do them all in one break. It's always a good topic. This, this here article from WeedReader.com. Okay. <laughs> How to Pass a Drug Test, The Definitive Guide, 20, right. 2018. Some of y'all, you have to pass drug tests. 
ask for right. certain employers, you know. Yep. And uh, so you need to do that. You're not alone, whether applying for a new job, getting a random screen from your current employer, or ordered to take one by the courts. They do that. And most people will end yep. up taking a drug test at some point. And for cannabis smokers, that could be a little problem. Despite the fact that marijuana is completely natural, completely harmless, and now completely legal, legal, not whatever, in many states, yeah. it can still get you in a lot of trouble. Employers can refuse to hire you. They can fire you. They, and they can even use your cannabis use as a grounds to deny unemployment or workman's comp. Testing positive for pot on a court-ordered test can land you in jail or lose you custody of your kids. And if that wasn't bad enough, marijuana has the inconvenient quality of sticking around in your body yep. for That's a long time. It. So you can test positive days or even weeks afterwards. But right. don't worry. We've got you covered. We'll dispel the rumors and give you the straight truth about what works and what doesn't so you can pass your test and get on with your life. Right. So the types of drug tests they may do, there's several methods that can be used. Test for the presence of drugs in your system. And yes, they call pot drugs. Anyway, is yes, a, bl a blood test, a hair test, a saliva test, and a urine test. Uh, and they go into detail on each of these tests, but I'm not. Okay. <laughs> so uh, you, you can check the link in the blog post after that. Um, because it's most common and also the most trouble for, troublesome for cannabis users, our article will focus primarily on how to pass a urine test. First off, the bogus methods. Before we reveal the best way to pass a drug test, let's clear up what not to do. There's a lot of information out there because, you know, the Internet. A yeah. little digging will turn up many methods uh, which will supposedly help you pass your test. Many of them are which are not reliable or simply don't work. For instance, drinking niacin, vinegar, fruit pectin, serto, whatever that is, etc. Taking golden seal or other herbal cleansing supplements. Throwing off the test with a high dose of aspirin or ibuprofen. Adding bleach, vinegar, water to your urine sample. Oh, my God. Really? Not, not, are, oh, my God. You, you put it in the urine after you've pissed it in a cup or whatever. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> so, they whatever. can detect that, though. Right. None of these methods are proven or reliable. Nowadays, labs test for and uh, detect all kinds of tampering. And the old yeah. aspirin trick no longer works either. I've even heard a rumor going around online that drinking bleach will help you pass. No. That's not only wrong, it's stupid and dangerous. Yeah, dumb. Don't. Just don't. <laughs> right. Many people w swear by detox drinks, many varieties of which are sold at head shops everywhere. These drinks uh, supposedly give you a window of a few hours after drinking it, during which you can piss clean. However, there are no studies or reliable evidence to prove that these really work, so use at your own risk. And before getting into how to pass, I will just say that I one time had to do a piss test to get a job back in 1987, 88, somewhere in there. Mm -hmm. um, and I had been, well, I was a regular, everyday pot smoker. Yeah. <laughs> and then my test was in four days <laughs> from, okay. from when they told me. So um, I just drank cranberry juice, like a gallon of cranberry juice every day. Yeah. And I, and I passed. So I, oh, I, I, I don't, yeah. I can't say that was, that works or doesn't work, but it worked for me. That's all I know. <laughs> so it says how, how to pass. How do you pass a urine test? Your best friend is to flush your system with a ton of water. The, the more water you drink, the more metabolites in your urine sample will be diluted. And maybe, maybe the uh, cranberry juice worked the same as the water. I don't know. Anyway, hopefully to the point of being below the threshold. Drink lots of fluids the day of your test, as much as you can hold. You might want to take a big dose of vitamin B along with it to darken the color of your urine. And, again, with cranberry juice, it's already going to darken your urine. So, anyway, labs can get suspicious if the sample is too clear and watery 
and may even reject it. You'll want to piss a few times before you give your sample, so never schedule the test early in the morning if you can avoid it. The metabolites build up in your bladder overnight, leaving a rich deposit in your first whiz of the day. Uh, when it comes to passing urine tests, time is your friend, so put off as long as possible. Quit smoking and use that time to flush out your system. Drink lots of water, exercise, sit in the sauna. Diuretics like coffee, tea, and cranberry juice can help. Uh, you can also buy diuretic pills over the counter. Natural detoxifiers like activated charcoal may also help lower your metabolite levels. If you're only an occasional smoker, your body can clean itself out in as little uh, in as little as a few days. A heavy yeah. user could still test positive three to four weeks after quitting, uh, maybe even longer. So the more time, the better. What about the testing on the spot? Well, I'm not going to go through everything they tell you on it, but basically, it's a crapshoot. <laughs> yep. if, if they come up to you and say, go to the bathroom and piss in a bottle, and you've been smoking weed like the day before that morning or during your break. You're fucked. Um, unless you carry around a fresh urine sample with you, which means you've got somebody at your house that's pissing in a bottle for you every day because they don't last, the urine samples expire in like right. 24 hours, or if you have some of that uh, powdered urine that you can buy, synthetic stuff, yep. uh, maybe they'll do that. Um, but if if it's one of the places where they watch you take a piss in the bottle, yeah, you're fucked. Yeah, you're, you're SOL pretty much at that point. Um, yeah. So if you're going to be going for a job that then and, and they don't do randoms, then you're probably okay. Um Yep. <laughs> Using one of the methods described, but uh, if if not, then well, maybe you could still get unemployment. I don't know. It says they could use that to stop your unemployment. So <laughs> I don't <Great>. know. <laughs> anyway, there you go. Weedreader. dot com. All right. Yeah. Anyway, let's play some more tunes, and, and we'll come right. back and uh, talk about more of that or other stuff. Okay, uh, sounds good. We're not going to be, like, snorting your ashes there, Flash. No, oh, hell no. <laughs> I'm not going to roll you up and smoke you like Willie. <laughs> All right, I, 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 don't know. I don't know what this first thing is. We're going to find out, though. Hopefully it's um, humorous. I think it's supposed to be, but I don't, I don't know the song it's supposed to be a parody of, so here you go. Ah, yeah, very nice there. Devin Almond and Samantha Fish doing Tom Petty's Stop Dragging My Heart Around. Before that, we had Beth Hart and Joe Bonamassa doing Close to My Fire live from Amsterdam. Uh, didn't say when that was recorded. Nope, didn't say when it was recorded. Well, maybe it was. Uh, no, nope, nope, doesn't say. Anyway, we kicked it off there with uh, something called my cat knows what you do in the dark. <laughs> it was a, par a parody of a Fallout Boy song. Uh, some guy named Smooth McGroove. Uh, uh, apparently, it's funny. I don't know. <laughs> I need to crop that picture, Graham. Which one? The one of me with Panda from Mr. I, I already cropped it. Do you want to crop more? Not a good representation of me. Well, uh, it's not a true representation. All right. I'm telling you, I, I thought it was a yeah. good. I thought it was a good crop, but you know. Yeah, my boobs look way too big, bigger than they really are. Oh, uh, you got the hugest boobs. In that picture, I do. <laughs> it's like they're not that big, people. They are not. I'm just. I know this is 
talking about. Uh, never mind. I was just, that's all I'm going to say on it. <laughs> I'm just saying. Smooth the groove, we call him self shaved pussy. Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> what the hell? All right, Sock. Oh, okay, Sock Puppet. <laughs> we know where your mind's at. Oh, man. <laughs> oh, it's Friday, Freaky Friday, you know. Yeah. What can you <laughs> anyway. Oh, wow. So, yeah. Um, I didn't know that the picture was going to look like that. I really Oh, well, no, it was uh, you know, awesome that he let me get my picture taken. With. What? Yeah, just, just because you put Dolly Parton to shame, you know? Yeah, yeah it's not. That's. <laughs> Tell me, you, it's not a true representation. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, I just, and then you know, I was talking to this girl last night. I went down to the bar and grill and have you know something to eat and. One of the bartenders, she got done working, and she sat down by me, and she was talking, and she, it was just her birthday, like, this week, right? So she had to go get the driver's license renewed. Always not a good time, right? And, um, anyway, um, so she gets a crap, she's bitching about her, her license, driver's license picture, right? Right. I'm like, yeah, I go, that lady, I go, I bet you it was the same lady that took my picture at that d &B, you know what I mean? Right. And I go, my picture's horrible. It's just absolutely horrible. And now they're not in color anymore. They're in black and white. Okay. But anyway, she took the worst fucking picture of me. And the boys, just they, are, they just get a total kick out of the worst picture ever of me, right? Because it is. It's like the worst picture ever of me. And it's like, I'm pissed. Like, right away, I wanted to get a change, you know? And I go, I swear, I'm going to go down there, and I'm going to pay, like, you have to pay, like, a little bit less to get it, like, if you lose it or something. Like, I say, let's say I, say I got it lost it, you know? You only have to pay 20 bucks. But I am not going to let them give me a bad picture. Again, I will bitch bad. I'm going to be like, oh, you need to retake it. I'm not paying more money either. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's like, get someone better to take the picture, because... And then she zooms right in, like, on your, just on your face part. Like, it's not, like, from a distance. It's, like, too close up. You know? And then, I was just, we were just bitching about that, because, you know, like, the, the girl, she's like, I swear she purposely took a bad picture of me. I go, I think that's what she did for me, too. She goes, I get it, but it's not a good place to freaking work. <laughs> you know? <laughs> you know? Which... The DMV, their system has gotten a lot better, I have to say. The one in Eau Claire has gotten better. Yeah. But I remember the one time, because the boys just recently got their licenses, like, you know, like a year ago or whatever, two years ago, whatever. Right. And so I'm in there with one of the boys, and it was like a weekday morning. It was like a Monday morning. They, I scheduled their test for like a Monday morning so I could, like, make up the time at work. You know what I mean? Right. So I take them to the test, and... I'm standing, you know, we were standing around waiting to get the paperwork done or whatever. And this really super drunk guy, you know, he was drunk. He's in there and he's harassing all the women in there. Not really harassing them sexually, like being lewd and everything. Mm -hmm. He was just talking to people and to women, mostly women. And it's just like when he, he started talking to me for a little bit, I was like thinking to myself, dude, you're fucking wasted. Why are you in the DMV and you're wasted? <laughs> That's not a good fucking idea, dude. No, it really doesn't work you know, too well. He was just a weirdo. He's just like trying to ask me questions about stuff. I'm like, dude, I don't know. You gotta ask them at the counter. I don't work here. Right. <laughs> you know. Right. He was fucking. I was like, really? Yeah. Surprised I didn't kick him out because he was drunk. And it was like Monday morning. <laughs> I'm like, dude. <laughs> What, did you just leave the fucking bar? <laughs> Come on. Could be. <laughs> Could I think be. he did. He left the fucking bar. Jeez. He went to the DMV. I'm like, do not go to the DMV drunk. I should have said that to him. I'm like, for one thing, you're in the DMV and you're drunk. They're not going to look highly upon you for that. <laughs> yeah. You're 
trying to get, you know, some, a, a, a license to operate a piece of machinery and you're fucking drunk. Right. <laughs> Smart move, dude. Uh, oh, my know. God. <laughs> but anyway, they deal with a lot of idiots, a lot of people, and, you know, it's the same shit all day long. I get it. It's not a a shitty place to work, but, you know, come on. Yeah, well, you know, they're they're civil servants. They're never very good. Right. You're a state employee, though. You, you make pretty good money. You get all the holidays off. You get all, you know, but, you but get a lot of it's, perks. It's, it's kind of that way in any city, I would say. Right. Because they're just rude as hell. They don't care about you. Right. Now, the, the people at the Moriarty DMV, or MVD, mm -hmm. they call it here, um, okay. they're really nice. They'll help you out. They'll do all kinds of stuff. Um but we got, you know, like, you know, it's a tiny little town. They got like four people working there. Right. Uh, yeah. And and yeah, so they're very helpful. They, yeah, I've only been been in there a few times, but you know, there's like ra rarely anybody else in there when you go in there, and so you walk right up to the window, and yeah. It, I it, mean, I'm not saying the the ones that are DMV are really nice. I mean, they're very helpful. They've improved, like I said. And, and you know, I'm pretty, I'm, I'm pretty sure when they took my picture for my license. They said, here, take a look, see if you like it or not. See, they didn't do that for me. Yeah, well, they, they don't do that. Do that. They don't do that. In the, nowadays, in, they everything's don't, digital. They can just retake it. They don't, you know they, what don't, I mean? they don't do that in the bigger cities. It's like, no, they're going to do it for me. When I go in there and pay $20, they going to be like, <laughs> okay, this is the deal. I didn't lose my license, but my picture sucks. That's why I'm going to pay $20 to get a new driver's license, but I want my picture to be good. Because right. the thing about driver's license... You have to have it for seven years or whatever. Yeah, eight it's like, years. I'm I sorry, I'm, I'm not using this as my ID for seven fucking years with this shitty picture of me. It's <laughs> like, fuck that. No, I'm sorry. I have, I'm embarrassed to show it to people. You know? When people ask me for my ID, I just like, I'm like, uh, oh. Really? <laughs> <laughs> I don't say that, but I'm thinking that. Yeah, sure. I'm like, okay, I'm... I'm going in there. I should actually go in there tomorrow. They're actually open on Saturdays for like eight to eleven or something. Yeah. You know, I swear, I I have to do that soon because it's driving me crazy. Yeah, I understand. I'm going to tell them right out. I'm going to say if the picture isn't good, you're going to take another one. You know, I'm going to be stick to my guns. I'm not going to let them give me a crappy picture again. Right, right. I'll be like, dude, I have to show this to people. You know, I, it's it. This picture sucks. <laughs> you know. Yeah. I, well, that's not a reason to get away. I'm like, I'm sorry, but you you guys fucked up. I should actually not have to pay to get it replaced because the picture's so bad. But I'm going to. You know. Sure. I mean, it, the people at R D and we are pretty nice, but and I understand that it's got to suck because you deal with all walks of life in there. You know what I mean? Right. But the guy that did their driver's test. He was very nice. I mean, he was actually very, very nice. You know what I mean? Yeah. And um, so they're pretty nice there, you know. Cool. That's cool. Yeah, but they deal with more people than your town. But oh yeah. You no. Know. Who doesn't? And then I was behind. I remember being behind <laughs> one guy. It, same a process where you first like fill up the form and you go to the first counter, and they're like kind of there to like decide what what you, where you need to go. You know what I mean? Sure. And then, so, but this guy doesn't understand that. He's standing up there, and he's asking this guy all these questions, and the guy keeps telling him, you got to go ask the guy that you deal with over there. And he, he said it to him like five times. The guy still kept asking him questions. I felt like saying, dude, he said you'll get your answers when you go over to the other window. You know, he was holding up the whole fucking process. You know what right. I mean? <laughs> it's like the guy was trying to be really nice to him, not say, okay, get the fuck out of here now and wait until your number's called. Exactly. You know, that's why after the fifth time of him still asking me questions, I'd be like, dude, go over there and wait for your number to be called. You're screwing up the process. <laughs> sure, sure. <laughs> it's like I wouldn't be able to work there. God. <laughs> I wouldn't. <laughs> I'd get all pissy. I would. I'd be uh, like, oh, yeah, oh. Yeah. yeah, it's like that. Any customer service is just worse. Right, part. right. Yeah, because people go in there with a, with a a sense of you owe me this. Right, yeah. right. Anyway, uh, uh, sock puppet here in the chat uh, mm -hmm. mentioned that um, since Microshaft took over GitHub. His water, 
his his Waterfox disabled stylish uh, page and it's a plugin for 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 Firefox, okay. Firefox Waterfox, a page enhancer for GitHub. Um, but I had a story all lined up for, for about stylish, for particularly here okay. and uh, here you go. You don't want to use stylish. You haven't wanted to use it for a long time, although you didn't know. Uh, this article here. And they, they, they spell out in Google Chrome in, in their headline, but it's also Firefox related. Uh, go Google Chrome warning. Popular browser extension is secretly recording everything you do online. The finding was made by a software engineer from San Francisco. He discovered the add-on stylish was recording his history since January 2017. More than 1.8 million people installed the popular web browser plugin. It quietly keeps track of all Google search results displayed inside a browser. The private data was linked to uh, details that could be linked with your identity. Uh, any user affected could be vulnerable to hackers and blackmailers, Seton says. So Google Chrome and Mozilla Firefox users may have had their entire online history siphoned and stored by third-party developers. Now, we're used to this from the government, from the NSA or FBI or whoever, but this is a third-party developer that's doing who knows what with it. According to a prominent security researcher who found the popular plug-in for the Google Chrome and Mozilla Firefox was recording everything users did online. The software, which is designed to allow users to customize the appearance of how web pages appear inside the web browsers, has been hijacked by spyware. The extension, which is more than 1.8 million users worldwide, may have been recording the browsing history of everyone who uses it. Worse still, the browsing data could be linked to details that make that users identifiable, uh, those users identifiable in the real world making them vulnerable to hackers and blackmailers. The finding was made by this guy, Robert Thieton, um, the, so, who discovered the software named Stylish, has been recording browser history since January 2017, when it was bought by new owners, Similar Web. Writing on his blog, Thieton said, it only takes one tracking request containing one session cookie to permanently associate you your account with a stylish tracking identifier. This means stylish and similar web still have all the data they need to connect the real world identity to a browsing history should they or a hacker choose to. Stylish sends complete browsing activity back to its servers together with a unique identifier. <laughs> so there you go. Um, if you're using stylish, yeah, you don't want to use stylish. <laughs> That's, um, and, but you said that Firefox and Waterfox have disabled it for security reasons. There's a good security reason. Uh, the article goes on and, and spells out some other stuff there, but um, just you know, you gotta, you gotta be aware of these these people creating these plugins and extensions and such, because you never know. I mean. Are they doing it all for right. free for for the love of of coding? Some are, some are probably not. It says those who have created a stylish account on userstyles.org will have a unique identifier that can easily be linked to a login cookie and text files intended to help users to access the website faster and more efficiently. Uh, this means that not only does Similar Web own a copy of any user's complete browsing histories, they also own enough other data to theoretically tie these histories to an email address and real-world identities. So you're you're happy that Firefox, Waterfox, disabled that uh, that browser extension. Good. <laughs> that's, that's what we're what saying here. <laughs> What? Uh, so that that's what we're uh, that's what we're saying here. You're you're happy they did that. Uh, right. They, that that was that was not a that was not a positive thing. Now I never used Stylish. I, I've I've only used GitHub uh, very minimally. I would say 
Um, I've, I've only got a few chunks of code sitting up there, and I just copy and paste it. I, I don't, I don't do anything fancy with it up there. Um, I would never do coding up that up there. I would, of course, do that locally, but. Uh, <laughs> Pox says next Chinese hackers will be stealing my data through my two rainbow light bulbs. Uh, yeah, hey man, <laughs> I wouldn't put it past them. <laughs> so you got monsoon season starting, and uh, yeah, yeah, it looks like rain coming up every day. Apparently, California has fire season starting again. Yeah, well, let it burn. <laughs> Your home state, Graham. Oh, I know, I know. It's just they, they've they've gone so they're all so fucked out there now. I, I, <laughs> you, and, you know, it was getting that way back in 2005 when I left, but uh, right, uh, it's so much worse now. now. Once once Jerry Brown got back in there, it was all over. Yeah, and, I remember yeah. that happening. Yeah, I do remember that. Uh, we, you can only hope, Sock. Um, you know, I, I don't, I don't know. Unless they they burn like San Francisco and Sacramento to the ground. Um, <laughs> yeah, which probably is not going to happen, but it, it's a it, it's a it's a hope. <laughs> <laughs> well, they were, didn't they have something going on where it was going to be Northern California and Southern California? Yeah, they talked about it and talked about it. And, I, I don't, don't think so. They're, they're, they're not going to do They aren't no. doing nothing, you know. No, it's just some grassroots thing probably. Yeah, I'm sure I'm sure there's people that want to, but those people are way right. outnumbered by people that don't want to. Yeah. And, and you know, those the people that don't want to would say, oh, you're going to steal our resources. And it's like, you don't live up here. These aren't your resources, but no. Right. <laughs> yeah, those areas probably do smell really bad. <laughs> any of the town towns in a big, in a, any big city, man, it's gonna stink. So. Yeah, um, pretty much. All right, back to the weed stories. <laughs> all right, let's do that. Crypto and weed, cryptocurrency and cannabis—a match made in heaven. Why are these two emerging in why these two emerging in industries need each other badly? Uh, what happens when you combine two of the world's most exciting emerging industries? Opportunities for explosive growth and massive disruption. Ambitious entrepreneurs are already competing to create synergies and fertile overlap of the blockchain and cannabis sectors. There are approximately a dozen cannabis focused blockchain coins I think I own seven or eight of them anyway uh, there are approximately a dozen cannabis focused blockchain chain coins or tokens that are competing to provide infrastructure for the fragmented industry for the cannabis business blockchain technology can be a gateway to safety transparency and greater operational efficiency for blockchain, cannabis represents an opportunity to solve real business problems and a nascent multi-billion dollar industry with unusually complex logistics and demanding compliance requirements. If cross-pollinating successfully, these two booming sectors could legitimize each other and force a policy conversation too big for the government to ignore. First off, solving the cash problem. In 2017, approximately $10 billion worth of cannabis was sold legally in North America. But in the U.S., practically all of these transactions had to be completed in cash. Why? Although the plant is legally available in 30 states, it's still considered a Schedule I narcotic by the federal government. Thus, businesses that produce retail produce, retail, or touch the plant in any way still lack access to traditional banking and payment processing resources. This results in significant operational challenges, including the inconvenience of paying salaries, utilities, taxes, etc. with cash. The bigger issue with the all-cash environment is that it creates a risk of violent crime and armed robbery. 
Although this is good for private security entrepreneurs, creating a need for armored trucks and ex-military to protect the stacks of cash, it's dangerous, impractical, and unsustainable for an industry experiencing a CAGR, whatever that is, north of 30%. Uh, due to the lack of traditional banking resources for the cannabis businesses, blockchain entrepreneurs, dun -da -da -da, here we are to save the day, oh, have a unique opportunity to uh, build a cryptocurrency that actually transacts millions, if not billions of dollars of commerce. According to the internet gambling pioneer turned cannabis blockchain entrepreneur, pri president of Alternate, Alternate Health Inc., Howard Mann, if the only way to do legal transaction was in one specific blockchain currency, then all transactions in that currency are immediately trackable, traceable, and verifiable to the stakeholder in the state compliant cannabis transaction. Mann explained to me that by publishing every cannabis transaction in a given state to an open ledger, we can create a central registry for all transactions and can therefore ensure that the proper taxes are administered and delivered to the appropriate parties and that entities involved in the supply chain are duly registered and that all products are tested to ensure state compliance. This completes the circle of information necessary for the industry. Because you see, even though it's a Schedule One controlled substance and you can't do business with banks due to that, the IRS still wants their cut. Your state government still wants their cut. <laughs> and so they got to make sure that if you are selling oh, it yeah. at a shop, that you are paying their cut. <laughs> Which is a huge cut, by the way. It ain't no little cut. They they tax pot out the wazoo. Who said oh, that? yeah. Mary, I think Mary, Grammy Mary said out the wazoo earlier, and I was wondering exactly <laughs> what the wazoo pertains to. I think that's ass, but... I, 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 I think it is, too, but... <laughs> I've never called my ass a wazoo. Anyway, Me either. In addition to facilitating transactions, blockchain, blockchain technology offers unrivaled accountability and transparency, significantly limiting opportunities for human error or manipulation. Mann's company recently signed a deal with Med, MedMen, one of the largest cannabis companies in the U.S. to provide e-commerce and digital payment services for MedMen's New York Medical Cannabis Dispensary. And if you notice in the chat, I, I do post uh, links to various payment systems via uh, cannabis coins that I am in favor of, that I use, Dopecoin uh, being one of the more favorite. Uh, THC is coming on strong. And um, uh, some people like the pot coin, but I wasn't, wasn't real happy with it. They, their their uh, developers kind of seemed to be flaky, um, and and so I got rid of all the pot coins. And maybe they're going to do good. I I don't know. I hope they do actually. But uh, check out the dope coin for sure, for sure, for sure. And uh, other other pot related coins. I I have a I have a coin called Bonger coin, which I had big hopes for it around <laughs> the beginning of the year, but the developers have kind of flaked out on that one too. So, I don't know. <laughs> I have some. <laughs> I have THC coin. I have Canna coin. I have Cannabis coin. I have Dope, <laughs> dope coin and uh, Bonger and. Uh, wow. Yeah. I don't have time for all that Bitcoin crap. Yeah. Well. Anyway. There's a lot. There's a lot of. There's a lot of. There's a lot of weed coins, and and there's a lot of people trying to get this system to work. Where yep. I mean, because you can't use the banks. We, all that cash is, is very, very dangerous to have. So um, it's it's great to see these people working together and working it out, and working aside from away from the government. So right. Um, yeah. No. I I I like that concept. Yeah. I'm not saying it's bad thing. Okay, so Poxified looked up wazoo here. It means anus, up the wazoo. Yeah, that's what I thought, anus. <laughs> Literally meaning up one's trap door. It can also mean excess or plentiful supply. I don't think that's the meaning we're looking for. That guy can't be our store Santa. 
he's got a ch he's got child molestation convictions up the wazoo. <laughs> That's is that really the example they wanted to put in there? <laughs> I'm not even sure they really do background checks on Santa's. <laughs> I don't think they do. <laughs> That's good enough. Most likely, oh, but God. I don't know for sure. <laughs> All right, this one I don't, I'm not really going to talk too much about, but we, it was okay. brought up in the chat the other day, and uh, I think it was Hansel uh, bad mouthing people that that smoke weed as far as driving goes. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, I remember. I saw, I was here for some of that. I okay. saw that conversation. Uh, but, but here's the article. It's posted on Normal's website, and he's, oh, Normal, they're a terrible group of people. You can't trust them. But but they didn't do this study. They're just reporting on it. It's just, it's right. just they just giving you the information that was done by these various scientists here. Um, and it comes out that if you drive high, nothing happens. It's it's so different than driving normally. Uh, if anything, your driving is a little better. Probably. <laughs> so so that, that's how it comes down. Um, it, it, it basically comes down to they, they did all these tests and there, there was no difference between somebody that was totally sober and somebody that was high. And you do that right. with alcohol and people are crashing into the light poles. Oh, yeah. Alcohol <laughs> so. and driving does not fit. Alcohol operating any kind of machinery really does not mix. So there's that article on the normal website, normal.org. And uh, re read it for yourself. I'll put the link in the post-show blog as I do all these links. But uh, j just bear in mind, if, if you think somehow that, oh, no, we can't have a bunch of potheads on the road, uh, maybe you can. Maybe it's better for you, actually. Because, like I said, I've seen studies where they're driving in. Cre they're, uh, Some uh, people are ignorant about drugs, and they think all drugs are the same. Like, if it's called a drug, then it has the same effect. I'm sorry, but cocaine, heroin, meth. Yeah, you don't uh, want to drive on those. That does not have the same effect as weed. No, you, okay. you don't want you, you don't want to drive on speed. <laughs> no, you don't want to drive when you're on coke or meth. It, Pox, Poxified says. Or heroin. Poxified says, on the other hand, riding with someone while you are high can be a very stressful time. Yes. <laughs> now, I'll just say this: I am a horrible passenger. I, I don't, I don't like being in a car where I am not in control of that car. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, I don't like it either. I, I, I don't, don't want, no. I don't want anybody else driving me. If I'm going to be going somewhere, I'm driving. Right. <laughs> because. Uh, I I just I don't trust people driving me. It's 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 a horrible, I a terrible experience. I, I don't know if it's better or worse when I'm high, but um, <laughs> probably worse. <laughs> <laughs> and Han says normal is not unbiased. They're not going to report tests that showed any results they don't like. They, they, it's, this was the test. This was the results. Mainstream media, welcome to mainstream fucking media. Yeah. So yeah, you read that you read it for yourself, and and I and I think you'll you'll have to agree that these tests are accurate and and complete and scientifically per performed, and um, yeah. So uh, you know maybe they're not unbiased. Of course they want marijuana to not be criminal, but who doesn't? Even you, Hansel, have stated that you want. Marijuana to not be a criminal thing. To, for you should be able to go get it whenever you want. And even, even though you're very anti anything that uh, that 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 is will uh, make you feel a little better, uh, you still agree with that. So um, I don't know. Whatever. There it is. That, that's all I really got to say about that at this point. My <laughs> thing is when you have a medicine that is beneficial to a lot of people for many different, a multitude of disease and ailments. Um, it should be available. As far as I'm concerned, what's going on, the illegality of it is really prohibition. And we're just coming Absolutely. out of that now, is the prohibition of marijuana. When you don't, I'm sorry, but if you have a child that has epilepsy, the only thing that, that cures that or helps it help helps you to manage or helps your child to manage it 
is marijuana, you're going to move to a state that's got legal marijuana. You're going to do whatever the fuck you got to do Absolutely. to save your yeah. child. And, 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 and this is, this, these are true studies. You want to talk about fucking studies? Let's talk about those studies. Well, let's just talk, let's talk about this. About the CBD oil studies. Do, the do ones you, that... Do you know somebody, do you know somebody that's angry a lot, just pissed off at everything? And everybody knows people like that. They just, they're just assholes because they're always mad about some stupid crap. Yeah. What you do is you give them, get them a little high. And suddenly, they're nice people. <laughs> once, <laughs> once those angry people get a little bit of buzz going, you know, it, it's not even really a buzz. See, it's, what if, it's more like it, a feeling. It, it's not. It's not like alcohol. It's not the same th type of buzz as alcohol. Yeah, Pox, get your dad high. That, that's a that's a great idea. Just you know, make some brownies and give him one. Make some brownies sometime. Be <laughs> just you know, just you know. flip it to him. <laughs> And he'll be like, hey, those are really good fucking brownies. <laughs> this works. All right, Hans, you're not going to agree with normal. I no, understand. No, he's not going to because he's got his mind made up because he drank that government Kool-Aid, way too much of it. Yeah. He believes everything that they say. I know, he's posting, Obviously. posting Fox News links all day. Well, so. he, he's, he, he, he signed up to be owned by them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I mean, come on. Okay, oh, are you done, or, do you have another story? Oh, I got a lot more stories, but I don't know. Oh, okay. Well, I, was just, I was just talking about the, or I just brought up this website about the California fires, right? Okay. Anyway, they have like a government, it's it's fire.ca.gov. So it's a government website. Anyway, um, insurance companies, okay, I got to interject here with this bullshit. Because the stats of what kills people the most, drug-wise, while driving, is fucking alcohol, dude. Right. Alcohol is fucking deadly, no matter how you cut it. You can OD on it. This is how many, many people are killed every fucking day by a drunk fucking driver. Just today, another guy in Wisconsin, 7th OWI. How does this fucking, how does this happen? Obviously, the drunk driving laws and the penalties aren't stiff enough because you got people out there driving drunk for their seventh, you know, obviously they drive drunk all the time, but the seventh time they got caught. Okay, so tell me that the fucking laws work. They don't. They don't stop people from driving drunk. All right? Just like murder's illegal, right? doesn't stop people from killing each other. No. <laughs> All right? Some law doesn't stop it. But right. anyway, the fucking drunk driving, that's the stats you need to look up. That's the stats of the insurance company. Don't, there will be no stats about driving while high on weed. Yeah, there will I, be I, I stats know. about driving while high on alcohol, though, and how many people it kills every fucking day. Or, or just people that are just bad drivers, and that's most of right. them. Right. Yeah. <laughs> or the people that are driving around on prescription pills. Right. Or talking on their phones or, or whatever. Talking on the cell phone or texting. Eating, texting eat, is eating a freaking cheeseburger drunk. while they're going down the road. Right. Well, driving tired is just as bad as driving drunk. Yeah. If you're If you're driving and you're almost falling asleep, you might as well be fucking drunk. Because Mind you're well? just, you're, if you fall asleep while you're driving, oh my god, that's the fucking danger. Right. To everyone else on the road. I mean, it, it's just, I learned a long time ago not to believe what the government says. Exactly. And, and if insurance companies are, are saying that uh, cannabis does the same thing, they, 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 they're lying. They're lying, but and they're lying they're because lying they see legalized pot smokers as a huge new cash cow. Right, exactly. <laughs> anyway, let's play some more music. All they care about is the money. That's all they care about is about the money. Yeah, let, let, sure. let's, let's play some more music here.
Yeah, let's do that. And yeah. uh, we'll come we back. We should do that. Yeah, we should. All right. We'll come back. We'll be back, everybody. Enjoy your Freaky Friday. Absolutely. It's summertime in the city. All right, that was U2 with a song called One for Peace Guy. You know, I'm not positive, but I think it's possible that's the first time a U2 song has ever been played on the Freaker's Ball. Anyway, <laughs> before that, we had Greta Van Fleet doing their song, Black Smoke Rising, from Summerfest, Moose Girl, in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, last Sunday. Um, excellent tune, excellent band, just great stuff there. And we yeah, took... Summerfest gets some good bands. I've never been to it, but it's a big deal. Yeah. Trampled by Trills also played, like, last night or two nights ago. Yeah. Yep, so yeah. cool. Uh, good to see Greta, you know, just spreading it out there. They're it good was... shit, man. I mean, I like them. The first time I saw them was on Freaker's Ball, you know, yeah. and I like them. They're good I bands. think they're good going bands. places. I think oh, they're no doubt, no cool. doubt. Anyway, we kicked it off there with a request from Kate Joe Cocker doing Summer in the City from his Across the Midnight Tour DVD. Good old Joe. Yeah. I mean, there's people locked up right now for a fucking slant. It's Is that wrong. Are? It's, it's, it's an injustice. It always has been. It's been prohibition for a very long time. States have made zillions of dollars off weed being illegal for as long as it has. It's been illegal what, since, what, 60? Probably 15? before. I don't, I don't even know when it's when it started. Yeah, I, I mean, I know that in the 40s, like, they tried to say, oh, all the black people smoke weed and they're raping the white women. And what a fucking <laughs> bullshit that is. Where are the white women at? <laughs> That's all fucking bullshit. All right? That, what, what was that movie? People of um, all walks of life and all races of life and all cultures of life enjoy the fucking ganja. You remember, okay. you remember that movie uh, Where the Buffalo Roam? Vaguely. With with Bill Murray as the, as the lawyer. The, yes. And all those corrupt Vaguely. judges putting all those people in jail for nothing. Yeah. For for, for just a tiny amount of weed and sentence them right. to just like ridiculous. exorbitant yeah. Exorbitant, you know, uh, amount of time being put You're in jail for that. fucking law adherence. <laughs> right, and, just, and that's that, that's real stuff, man. That's right. That, that's craziness. It's it's insanity. Yeah. I mean, it, you know, it's it's bullshit. When to me, I'm sorry. Okay, this is my take on undercover fucking cops, especially at a music festival. That's right. fucking bullshit. It's unconstitutional. You're gonna be there as a cop. You might as well. You better have your fucking costume on, bitch. Because I'm sorry, that's fucked up. Being undercover and acting like you fit in, and someone next you standing at you standing amongst in a crowd of people, and someone fucking sparks up a fucking pipe or something, and you're like, oh, really? And you're not even dressed and getting your costume. I'm, that's bullshit, dude. That's Absolutely. A terrible tactic. It's fucking under the, it's below the belt tactics, and it's it's fucking bullshit. And you know, being a cop, you know that fucking the effects of alcohol, as opposed to the effects of weed. You know how many calls a day or a week you get for drunk driving related fucking calls, drunk driving related fatal accidents. Yes. You you don't get calls for weed driving related accidents. No. You don't. Anyway, I'd like to I'd like, like to discuss where the person's drinking and had smoked some weed, but I guarantee you that alcohol caused that accident. Not that, but we can enhance your buzz. Sure. So this is the deal: do not drink alcohol and operate machinery via a car, a motorcycle, a boat. There was just a boating accident last week. Fucking person out there in a fucking boat. Probably first time they ever fucking owned a boat, right? Right. Well, they're drinking and shit. A couple people on there, you know. Fucking, they, they fucking crash. Well, 
they said it was speed and alcohol. <laughs> Fuck. Speed and alcohol, and not knowing how to navigate a boat on the water. Okay. Yeah. Because uh, the, one of the people was probably boating correctly, the other person wasn't boating correctly, and they they went the wrong way, and that's what caused them to crash. Sure, sure. I mean, I don't know if you've ever boated, Graham, like a motorboat. I have. Yeah, I mean. And I've definitely, you, uh, I, I, right. I've definitely motorboated, Moose. Yeah, there's rules <laughs> of the lake. It's just like being on the road. There's rules. <laughs> don't be out there unless you know the fucking rules of boating. And one of them is don't be fucking drunk. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know? don't. Just, just don't be an idiot, no matter what it is you're doing, wherever you're doing right. it. Just don't yeah, be an idiot, you know, and you'll yeah. be fine. But I, but I must say, I must say, motorboating is a great time. Oh, it's a fun ball. It's a fun blast. <laughs> I want to try it more. Like I'm driving around, like driving all around. I see these like small little, like fifteen, sixteen foot, seventeen foot boats that are just cute little ones. You know, oh, you mean a, big yeah, yeah, boats. yeah. You're, they you're, have some, you know, ten horse, twenty horsepower motor you're, on there. You're, you're I'm like that. That would be perfect. <laughs> like, I could take it to boats in bluegrass. I could tow it with my vehicle. You know what I mean? You're, you're talking about it on an actual boat. Well, I know, but for me, at my use, for my purposes, <laughs> just to go out fishing, I'm not going on Lake Superior with it. You know what I mean? That's not, no, you know. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going on little lakes and rivers. I'm going to boats and bluegrass. I'm going to go to the island. You know, it's it, it, it's just, it's for not intense fishing or boating, like not, like Canadian fishing or anything like that. Right. No. Okay, so well, I, I, we, 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 only, we only have a few minutes here. Okay. But I'd like to just bring this topic up. You can think about it and talk about it on your own afterwards because, like I said, we don't have much time. And that's funny that we don't have much time because the article is How to Think About Time. Okay. Physicists say our perception of smoothly flowing time is a cosmic accident. So why do we think the future always comes after the past. Never trust right. a physicist never trust a physicist to tell you the time, says Marina Cortez at the Royal Observatory in Edinburgh, UK. Physics has a slightly different idea about what time is. We used to think we had it nailed. Time was the tick tock of a clock somewhere outside the universe against which all processes within it could be measured. This appealing, intuitive idea of an absolute time underpins things like Newton's classic laws of motion and even the distinctly non-intuitive workings of quantum equations, our best description of the nitty-gritty of reality. Never mind that these external readings of time would come from Einstein's theories of relativity. Uh, come from, <laughs> I could almost read, never mind that these external readings of time would come from Einstein's theories of relativity blew away the whole idea. Einstein showed that space and time are, well, relative. Both are part of a unified space-time that is warped by both gravity and motion so that no two observers can ever fully agree on what happens when. The discrepancies are imperceptible to us because we live our whole lives in roughly the same gravitational field as at roughly the same low speeds. We are deceived into thinking time is an absolute by an accident of circumstance, says physicist Carlo Rovel at some other school in France, <laughs> author of The Order of Time. In our experience, time passes at the same rate, but this is only true in the non-relativistic approximation in which we live. So, rule one to thinking clearly about time cast off the idea that it always flows at the same speed and in the same direction. Um, anyway, that, that, that's all they give me in this article because it's one of those things that you have to actually log in and pay and stuff like that, um, which I'm not going to do. <laughs> <laughs> uh, They're on uh, newscientist.com, uh, and we are out of time. Um, well... Our, we need to do our last set. Yeah, right. That's what. I, but that's what I mean. We're out. Of, we're out of time to 
Yeah, I'm on. Right. So just think about that. And by the way, there was a guy uh, very recently that has discovered a slight time warp out near Las Vegas. You can look that up on, on oh. the interwebs. And um, he's recorded it as to what happened out there. So uh, here we go cool. with, with our final set for the evening. This is Enjoy, everyone. Warren Zivon. Black Betty. <laughs> Christopher Amoroso there with his uh, version of Black Betty, at least one of them. Yeah, I do have another by him. Uh, awesome stuff. Anyway, before that, Scarlet Riot with Rising from back in 2015. I love that band, uh, uh, and that chick is uh, hot, as you say, um, poxified, but she, she's a little, she just looks like a little cupie doll to me. <laughs> 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 I, you know, uh, I, I, I couldn't think, look at her and think, ooh, baby, I'd like, because, you know, she just looks like a little cupie doll. Anyway, <laughs> before that, Aerosmith with same old song and dance from You Gotta Move, and we kicked it off there with Warren Zivon. The Werewolves of London, a tribute to Henry Hull, who played an American werewolf, uh, uh, I mean, uh, Werewolf of London. Uh, I, I love that movie. I like that movie a lot. The Werewolf actually. of London. Yeah. Yeah, it was really good. It's a so, good movie. Anyway, uh, that's going to wrap it up. Uh, tomorrow you got yep. the Dark Table at noon with Vin E and Flash E. Oh, God. <laughs> so be prepared for that noon Eastern. I'll be on. I'll be on noon Eastern on Sunday with the blues. Okay, no, I got to The hillbilly and the surfer. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's what you got with them too. <laughs> Sorry to categorize you, but that's what you guys remind me of. Yeah. Oh, no doubt. No doubt. Yeah. The hillbilly and the surfer. But, but still, darks both. <laughs> <laughs> yes, dorks all the same. So yeah. Anyway, yeah. so I'll be on Sunday with the Blues at noon Eastern, and we'll be playing the trivia here in the chat for three hours there. And then immediately after me will be Hal Anthony behind the woodshed, opening up a big old can o whoop ass. And then Grammy will be back on Wednesday with her show. So you notice there between Sunday and Wednesday we got nothing. So anybody nothing. wants to do any shows, you know. anybody wants to do a show, let me know. Step I'll get, right up. I'll get you on here. Come on down. Absolutely. You're the next contestant on the Price is Right. On the Real Liberty Media Radio. Yes. Yes. Anyway, Come so... Come on uh, down. <laughs> <laughs> you got anything else? No, I'm good. All Have right. a good weekend, everyone. Absolutely. Peace.